that is up, peeps. We are at Chris's shop once again, go figure. And we're going to install an AEM wideband air fuel ratio gauge. So let's get going. Why well, I explained that in my yes. intro. Well, before Mandy, this was my director. The rod? <laughs> the rod. The tripod. <laughs> your, your rod is your rod. Your name is now Rod. The other day he's sitting there and he's like. And he's just talking to Chris, yeah. videoing himself. Yeah. And I'm like. That's what vloggers do. But you're. It was all I was looking at the back of the camera and I'm like, he's not even on his face. That's why I was like, give it to me. The, the <laughs> camera was facing me. Like, all that footage I have, it was proper, like it was supposed to be. Okay, well, good. You took it from me and I was like, oh. And it was weird because the camera looked like it fucking floated. <laughs> like, watching the footage when I was editing it, I was doing like this, and then all of a sudden I didn't have hands on it, and it was just like... It just looked weird. Looked I was magic. like, and then I was like, no, come back. But it legitimately looked like the camera was there and just like floated away. Good catch, man. <laughs> I'm gonna have to check engine light anyways. I may as well not put the second O2 sensor in. Yeah, sure. Oh, there it is. This isn't going in the video, by the way. It will go in the video. Nah, I'm editing. If I don't see it, then I'm gonna cry. <laughs> and I'm boycotting. Do you watch my videos? Yeah. Oh. How do you know, how do you think I knew it said Happy Sunday? You left Happy Sunday. Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it was Monday. It was Monday. It was so Monday. <laughs> she knows. <laughs> Why do you laugh so hard? He's like, my work doesn't know I'm here. And he's like talking about it. And I was like, Happy Sunday. <laughs> yeah, I might as well take him out so when we do put the car up, we'll get out. I wish I had a. And uh, if it's something. How do it? If it's something we can knock out really easily, we'll knock it out. Yeah, even then, we're able to pull the... We may be able to blow the bung in that. I'd honestly I'd rather not blow the bung in that, because if I sell those for two, three hundred bucks, that, that'd be a long one, too. Well, they can Where figure that out in themselves. Stickers, get them! Email me! Shameless plug! <laughs> nice! Woo! LicensedToSend.com we got, we got the more funny one over here. Goofer. That has nothing to do with license to send, though. A license to send made the fucking thing. Yes! It is very humid in this shop, so uh, we're going to be doing what we can. But hopefully, this video helps some of you guys that want to install this wideband. And I'm using. I forget the name of it now, but I'm using this fancy cubby hole insert to mount the wideband in the uh, factory position of where in the dash about here where that unneeded space is for the ashtray so and I can link that here in the description I forget where I bought it now but it, it'll be helpful so I'll get into more details as I'm installing but can wired it into the 12 volt socket power on certain years. Mine's a 2011, so I get to do that, but not all of the years have that. So you need to test if your socket is constant 12 volt or switch 12 volt. So that's a big factor. So hopefully the lighting is good, and I'm gonna try to get started on this, popping some of these panels off and pull the radio out so we can get to install this portion. So, per the usual, I hope this audio picks up decently. But I'm using my RI kit to remove a lot of these panels. So, you're just gonna pull that panel.
these panels at the top of the dash and then you'll get access to two seven millimeter bolts one on each side of the dash bezel So for this, you just need to pull up, uh, put the ignition on, put the car in drive or neutral, and pull up straight up right there on the back portion, and it'll lift right up. Now you just need to get those 7 millimeter, seven millimeter bolts out, and then you can pull the uh, radio face. 7 millimeter bolts removed! Alright, so I'm going to show you this part on taking this cubby portion out. You may ask yourself, why would you install this? Because you need more power, baby! <laughs> Oh yeah, that dang there is a 10 T10. Boy, I tell you what. So I put this piece in here and I needed to transfer this stuff in here. I saw it. Yeah, and then once you get that part out, you just uh, you place it in there and it clicks into place. You leave the tab part out of the comments. You don't want people to know you fucked up. Actually, hey, that, that worked pretty well, actually. Good. Yep. And then you put this piece on that piece with the screws you took out. Then like that. Now, when you're screwing these back in, I would recommend letting the screws catch the existing threads. Don't try to re-thread it. So apparently there's a grommet I'm supposed to run through. I have no clue where that, or I have no clue where that grommet is. It's really hard to go from cussing all the time to not. Just throw that out there. I mean, gosh. I give up. Hey, did I set that light somewhere? Oh, it's right there. Well, thank you, good sir. Oh. But that's me. I see, said the blind man. This grommet's way the hell up there. I don't even know where the I don't even know where my face so it's is. It's not actually in the like fold of the door. It's, it's, it's right here. Way I'm touching it right now. <laughs> Turtle! This grommet's really hard to get to, but it's up there. You just gotta kind of fish and feel for it. It's up in the door hinge. You gotta run that side of the plug through it. Alright, I'm feeding this through backwards. Because this side is smaller than that side. Alright, so right here, you're just going to want to feed your wires through behind the carpet right there. Then you come out of the fender all the way over to the center console section. 
Uh, just run it. It's your preference. Whatever you can. Okay, so after you fish your wire through the fender in that general direction, because that's hard to get detailed into without the door open all the way, because there's a lift in the way, but it should come up through the fender right there, which then if you want, you can run through that bottom portion of the fender right there. Run wire through fender. Fender comes outside of engine bay. Oh, big, big un understanding. Hopefully, it runs through okay. All right, so your wire is gonna come up through the fender, close to where your vent is. Right there where that vent is. Oh, you can see. Have the wire right there. So I'm gonna feed that wire or probably that hole right there and then I'll run down that probably post or pre cat I haven't made up my mind yet because I think I'm gonna buy long tube headers in the next month or so. Or well, actually in a week or so. I'm gonna take that to week, not month. I think long tube headers are gonna happen here really soon. If long tube headers happen, we need to go ahead and go post. In the store. I had that really zoomed in for some reason. <laughs> so all that video is probably shit, but you heard the audio. That's what happens when you've been drinking margaritas all day. That ain't gonna make a video. Oh, that'll make a video. Go on that, that white band. Yeah. So based off this info with EFI Live, you can download. Which is more or less the same as HP Tuner. Right, which is basically the same thing as HP Tuner. So you plug this into your OBD2. This is gonna be a lot of editing. Yep. This plugs into your wideband. All those little pins are what give you the information. And then the other portion of it is positive and ground, which in a 2011 portion is going to give you your positive and negative switch terminal. But if you do not have a 2011 and you test your cigarette lighter with the ignition off and it's not always on, or if it is always on, you can follow this video that will show you how to wire a dash camera, which is the exact same as wiring that for switched power. So it gives you a second video of mine to watch on how to wire things properly through the driver's side dash panel. Alrighty, so here I'm just running all my wires from the OBD side uh, into the center console and then I'm running the other portion of the wires that I will eventually splice and solder into the keyed ignition cigarette lighter. Again on mine's a 2011 and I can use the cigarette lighter for an ignition switched on. This may not apply to yours, so you need to test it if it's constant or switched with the ignition. Right here you can see I'm plugging the uh, OBD port into the wideband. Uh, something I'd recommend is they sell some Y splitters that you can get and then you can tuck all that up in there uh, a bit nicer and it give you some options to uh, add an aero force gauge or an in gauge if that's something you wanted to do down the road. All right, so uh, right now I'm just soldering in the positive and negative of the wideband into the portion of the cigarette lighter harness. Uh, mine having switched uh, cigarette lighter, it makes it a lot easier for me to do the install, so I just peeled back some jacketing and soldering it directly in, like it take it up, and just tuck all the wiring right down in there and keep all the extra now, if I get another car or something down the road, I want to do that too. I can.
All right, now it's time to start buttoning everything up. Get your radio face bezel and plug it all in and make sure that it, that it comes on with the ignition as it's supposed to. You can see there that it's lit up, so you're good to go. Just put everything back the way you took it out. As far as the OBD sensor goes, depending on your application, you're going to want to plug it in differently. Uh, we didn't do it just yet because I am going to go long tube headers, so if you do long tube headers, you can plug the sensor from the AM into the furthest position of the long tube header, and then when you get a tune, they can delete all that stuff from the ECU. If you want to do cats, you can do pre-cat, or if you do cat deletes, you can do the BNB test pipes and put it in one of those sensors like you would do long tube headers. So, everything is wired in correctly currently. As far as the air fuel ratio gauge goes into the cigarette lighter on the 2011. And as mentioned before, if yours is an always on in the ignition, watch this video. And other than that, just put everything back together the way you took it out, and you should be good. Appreciate you watching. Okay, bye.